Being in the spotlight was something Rachel Martin knew she was destined to do. I wanted to work as, you know, an on-air, like an anchor woman. And then also I loved to dance and I loved to sing and I loved anything with theater. As a teen, Rachel jumped at the chance to model for an upscale salon, but she never imagined where it would eventually lead. I don't think I really thought about the ramifications of it. How would it affect my life, you know, the next 15 years, my family, my relationship with the Lord. Rachel grew up in a Christian home in rural Georgia. At the age of 10, she gave her heart to Christ. I remember just weeping. I mean, weeping on my knees for probably 20 or 30 minutes and just praying and weeping and just a realization of, of sin. While Rachel's commitment was sincere, after high school, she began to turn to other things. I want to get a good education. I want to make great money. Like my, my focus was wrong, but it was so about making money. While she was in college, Rachel met a man who swept her off her feet. He was my doctor, my eye doctor. And he actually asked me on a date when I had my second follow-up. Within six months, he had asked me to marry him. And then about eight months later, we were married. Rachel was ready to put her dreams on hold to be a full-time wife. But her husband didn't want her to lose sight of her aspirations. He really was encouraging me to um, you know, finish school and get back into modeling and to pursue that. So I did. Her husband introduced her to a photographer friend that would change her life. Rachel and the photographer needed to build up their portfolios. A year later, um, he had actually went to Playboy Enterprises in Chicago, and they were hiring house photographers. They saw a picture of me there, and they're like, who is this girl? They called. I remember the day they called. And they're like, hi, this is so-and-so from Playboy Mac. And I'm like, who? So I remember my husband coming home, and I shared it with him. Um, and to my shock, he said, I think it's a great idea. I think you should do it. And I was like, absolutely not. I was like, that's, that's just wrong. And he was like, I think it's great. If you look on the Sistine Chapel, it's artwork and that's in the house of God. So he really began just to bring all these different like view, viewpoints or different facets on, on that posing nude was okay. After six months of pressure from the Playboy executives, Rachel finally agreed to pose. She remembers her first photo shoot. I mean, it hurt deep down in, in those core places, it hurt. But yet, there was a part like, I, I want to know this is what I want to do. I'm going to do this. Rachel's pictures made an impression on the Playboy executives. Hugh, Mr. Hefner, um, had saw my work, and I think some other people. And they, you know, said we want to, her to be as a playmate. Being a playmate is considered like an elite thing you know, being chosen as one of the girls of, out of the 12 months. Over the next three years, Rachel appeared in numerous projects for the company. I began to do a lot of, as a spokesperson, um, literary parties, um, going to art galleries um, and openings in New York and New Orleans. Uh, they flew me to Buenos Aires, had me on television shows, flew me to Japan. I mean, they had me all over. Soon, all the traveling and time apart took a toll on Rachel's marriage. We were, I think, in completely different places in our life. Like, we were wanting completely different things. After her divorce, Rachel questioned her decision to become a playmate. I remember just feeling like, this is so wrong. I cannot do this. Like, God really began to work on my heart. So I, I eventually just said, okay, I, I'm not going to do it. And I told them why. And I know they thought I was crazy. <laughs> Rachel moved to New York to try acting. She got a small part on a TV show and met a man who was a Christian. He ended up sharing his story with me and telling about his walk as um, a, you know, becoming, rededicating as a Christian and, and where God pulled, pulled him out of and where he was at now. And he invited me to a church. And then I started going to this church and um, that's when I realized I, I, it, my eyes were just open, you know, like scales fell off. And I just began to see how I can really, he's a loving God. But I would just wait, realizing that I heard his voice a long time ago as a little girl. And that's when I finally, you know, relinquished and said, I'm yours, God. Rachel's life changed, but she struggled to deal with her past. There was some shame, shame and guilt in that and learning how to take that before him. But it, it, it was a slow process over the seven years, but a, a beautiful one in that because it, God wanted, was making me into his image and not my image. Today, Rachel still models, but in a very different industry. 
God adorned me to be on a, a cover of Today's Christian Woman, where I've been on a cover of Playboy. Now, wherever she goes, Rachel shares her story, hoping to help others find the forgiveness she knows. There isn't any more shame. There's not guilt. Wherever I go, that I know that I'm the fragrance, the aroma of Christ, and the righteousness of God through Jesus. And there's no shame with speaking about Playboy. I am free in Him. You know, the blood of Jesus, it absolutely covers.